Hey guys, welcome back to Ironside Ranch. So, we have been out for what about a week and a half now, actually, since we've done a video, and uh, apologize for that. Ed, here, let me tell you why real fast, and we'll get into today's topic. So, uh, what happened is when we got when we got sick, we were out for like five weeks, right? We were we were dealing with this sickness for five weeks. We were doing you know as many videos as we could, but we lost all of our backlog on videos. We always keep some videos uploaded, so that way we have life get in the way. We have we have videos going forward. The problem is that we used all that backlog of videos and then we had a bunch of stuff come up. We were real busy with work. Uh, both of our businesses are going really well and so we've just been slammed. Um, and then uh, and then Amanda Lynn and I were out of town for a couple of days for, we went down to Warrior Poet Society and did a shooting course down there, which is just a ton of fun. Uh, highly recommend that if you haven't, uh, haven't ever done one or if you're looking at Warrior Poet Society, they do great courses. So learned a ton and I'm a, I'm a very avid pistol shooter and I learned a lot down there, so it was a great time. But, uh, but anyways, so, um, so but we don't want to advertise, obviously, when we're out of town or anything like that. So uh, that's why we, uh, we that, that, that's, that's kind of why we've been out for a week and a half. So what I want to talk about today was actually, I want to talk about flatbed trailers. Kind of like, okay, so remember, this is a homesteading and a farming channel uh, predominantly. I know we do get into a little bit of world events of what's going on, but mostly that's just how it affects us. But uh, but I wanted to talk about flatbed trailers and, uh, and, and what you want to look for when you're purchasing a flatbed trailer. So maybe you're getting your first one or you're looking at like, hey, what exactly do I need? Um, you know, what, what, what am I going to be hauling with this? And so um, I have a couple couple thoughts on this. Uh, one of the things with flatbed trailers is my general thought is to always get bigger because it's 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 and there's a certain limit to that, uh, but always go bigger than what you think you need. And what do I mean by that? For one, I would never buy a flatbed trailer with just a single 3,500 pound axle. If they're just they're unless you're living in a subdivision and all you're going to be carrying is pine straw, uh, they're not they're not worth having. And uh, you know, and, and that assumes that you don't have a truck as well to, to do any hauling. So um, I would I would certainly not do that. Uh, they they do have some uses, but it's very very limited. Um, whenever I look at a trailer, I always look at double axle trailers. You'll see on our farm, the only one with a single axle is the one that uh, we, our little trash trailer. Uh, that's because it was cheap and it's a trash trailer. The um, the, only, the only thing we do is we drive it to the dump. That's ten miles down the road. Not a big deal. So I always look at double axles. The reason I want dual axles is, for one, triple axles tend to not turn very well. So unless you're doing like hot shot work or really heavy equipment stuff, uh, in which case you're probably not watching this video, triple axles are not really necessary. And uh, and you can get the majority of the benefit with good double axles. So uh, dual axles, uh, for one, if you have a flat tire, you can usually limp home. I've done that before. Um, but uh, you want to make sure that the, your ride is is correct and not canted in the wrong way, because um, then you'll you'll ruin a rim. And I've done that before too. <laughs> um, but uh, but you can usually limp home if you can just remove the tire and you don't have too much weight back there. Um, so it's got some advantages like that. There's some advantages in changing tires because it's a little bit easier because they make these little things that uh, that the trailer can drive up on. And they can just change the tire out real fast. It's super simple, um, and you don't have to. Uh, you don't even have to have a jack. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but anyways. So, so dual axles are for me a necessity. Now, there's a next thing on there: dual wheels on the dual axles. And do you need dual wheels? So I'm actually at right now. So this is actually kind of funny. I'm actually at a tire place right now. We're getting the tractor filled, um, and so lots of trailers, lots of tires around here. And this is one of my problems with dual wheels: is that um, they you have to come to a place like this. This is a big, uh, big tire place. And, uh, you, you know, they got like a four acre lot here. I mean, it, it's, it's right by a truck stop. And, uh, that's all these guys do is change tires out, uh, day in and day out. And you have to have a, uh, a place like this to go to really to start working on dual wheel tires. And so, um, that, that gets in the way. So unless you needed it for heavy equipment, I would not get dual wheel tires. The other thing is, is it's really expensive when you have to replace tires. There are some advantages cause you probably won't even know when you have a flat back there, but, uh, um, and there, are, there are some advantages in the weight and everything like that, and the stability of it. Sorry, I'm hold, I'm, I don't have my mount today, so I'm holding this. Um, there are some uh, some advantages in that. 
but uh, but but the but the long and the short of it is is that for residential use and for light industrial use and light uh, uh, agricultural use um, and for majority of what we're going to be doing, you really don't need the dual tires. You can get single tires and you can get those on up to about a seven thousand pound axle. There's a few brands like Diamond C makes an eight thousand pound axle if you're going to buy brand new, uh, but usually you're looking at about a seven thousand pound axle. So that means you can get a fourteen thousand pound rated trailer minus the weight of the trailer. So let's just say the trailer weighs twenty five hundred pounds or make the math easy well they 2,000 pounds so it means you can hold 12,000 pounds of stuff back there um, and that's a pretty good amount of stuff you know that's 12 or 12 to 18 or so big round hay bales being on the weight of them you know mine mostly weigh about 900 pounds uh, so you're looking at you know 12 to 15 or so but uh, before you reach that capacity most trailers can go beyond their capacity but that's not something you necessarily want to make a habit of uh, that'll haul just about any tractor you want to buy for industrial or for agricultural use, as long as you're not getting like massive plowing tractors and stuff like 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 uh, big uh, big things that require it, it, really anything that you're going to be dealing with past that. You're going to have to call Low Boy and get it uh, sent out to you by an 18 wheeler. Um, now there are a few exceptions, things like some small skid steers um, and small. Um, uh, back hoes and, and, uh, and track hoes and uh, excavators, they can go on a uh, dual wheel, dual axle trailer like what we have behind us. Ours has dual wheels. The reason we did it is because we're opening up a mulching service and so we needed it to be able to haul the skid steer and we didn't want limitations there. This is These are both 10,000 pound axles and so um, they, they allow us to stay right in the limit of what we need before we have to get a CDL. So. Um, so that's what we look at with it is we want uh, we, we want to be able to make sure we're, we can haul everything um, and and uh, and that you have good axles on there I would if I was buying it for just agricultural use I would look at dual axles five or seven thousand pound axles one of the two um, and then the next question is is okay so like what about like all the additions on there right should I be paying for like these you know the little strappy things that go over the top that hook on the sides of the loads they got the little tool trays and the baskets and all that crap those little features are awesome, and they can, whoa, sorry guys, I'm, I'm having to hold this, that's kind of a pain. Uh, they can make life a lot easier. Um, the reality of it is, is that you can add those things on for not much money after the fact. Uh, it's real easy to weld those things on. You can get little brackets, on each trailer carries all this crap. And so uh, you can get most of that. Well, you can get pretty much anything. Anything you can get from the factory, you can get aftermarket uh, for as a general rule. And so, um, you know, for us, uh, yeah, I mean, I buy used trailers. I'm not buying them brand new. It's too expensive. But, uh, but, but, you know, for us, all that stuff I can add on if I really want it. But for the most part, as long as I have a toolbox to keep chains and stuff like that, I never really feel like I'm lacking. The little ratchets, if you're if you're really running lots of loads, like a hot shot driver, those are real handy to have. Uh, but again, for, for residential or agricultural use or even light industrial, um, they're not super necessary, but they can just they can add some convenience. If you decide you want them, I think you can get them off an of e-trailer and just weld them on. Um, so anyway, so, so those additions are kind of nice. Now, then you got to look at your decking and what kind of deck boards do you want? Do you want, um, you know, the pressure treated pine basically, or do you want to do, um, oak or do you want to do uh, diamond plate steel? What do you want to do? They all have their advantages. Pine, obviously the pressure treated is obviously the cheapest. It lasts about 10 years down here. You may get closer to 15 or 20, depending on where you're at in the country. We get about 10, um, on that pressure treated pine before it goes bad. Um, this one currently has pressure treated pine. Every time I replace decking, I cut uh, white oak on my sawmill, and then we treat it with, uh, uh, we, we treat it and, uh, and and continually treat it as it's on there, and that white oak lasts about 20, 25 years like that, as long as you continually treat it. White oak is real sturdy. It's great to drive up on. The ramps don't flex. Nothing flexes. They're they're real solid. Um, the uh, if you want to use the steel, the steel's nice. Steel does get slick, so it's not it's not a great thing if you're moving equipment with it because it can get real slick up there. Even if it's got traction on it, um, it can get really really slick. And so they make ones on there that have grips that do a little bit better job. Uh, again, those are quite a bit more expensive, and uh, I've just never really found it worth it. A white oak to us is by far the best option. It's a good middle of the road. It's it's sturdy. If you keep it treated, it'll last virtually indefinitely. Um, I mean, just last a long time. And uh, anyway, so uh, so generally that's what we go with. But like I said, um, we just buy our trailers standard, and then once the boards rot, I cut white oak for them because we have the sawmill. We're in a little bit different position. Um, if I didn't have the sawmill, I'd probably just do the white oak upgrade on everything, and uh, and then I, then I have it, and I don't have to worry about it. 
but uh, <clears throat> certainly worth considering. That our little trash trailer, we cut a bunch of white oak for that one and put white oak down. When that white oak rots on us at some point in time, um, maybe not even in our lifetime, <laughs> um, I'll probably come on that one and put expanded metal again, just because it's a trash trailer. Um, but uh, but we'll we'll deal with that when the time comes. So. You can't really go wrong with any of them, but there are certain advantages to each of them. And uh, in my eyes, the white oak has the best options there. Now, then the next question you run into is, do you want a gooseneck trailer or not? And the gooseneck trailer, this is this is the, the, the kind of the bigger question, right? Because a gooseneck trailer versus a bumper pull trailer, you're going to pretty much double the price on that on that trailer. Um, as soon as you, you know, you, you start buying a, a 5,000 pound, 7,000 pound dual axle bumper pull trailer. Uh, right now, I've seen them as low as about $3,000. Uh, but you buy a gooseneck that same size, you're looking at probably a minimum about eight thousand um, dollars. They they that's again right now used market. I'm not talking brand new. Uh, guys, don't buy trailers brand new. Trailers you don't need to buy trailers brand new unless you're getting a very specific trailer for some type of uh, work that you're doing. Um, why why would you buy it brand new? There there a, a trailer. This trailer is twenty five thousand dollars brand new. I got it for ten um, or eleven. I think we paid eleven out the door for it. So. Um, so anyway, so, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, why would you ever do that? And, and who cares about a little bit of rust or something on a trailer? It's like, it's a little bit of surface rust. As long as it's not rusting through and having structural issues, uh, and it's been well maintained, you know, this one has all new electric. It's got new, new tires on it. Um, he, he kept everything in good condition. Uh, it's a used trailer and it's in, it's in, you know, you've got some cosmetic defects, but, uh, beyond that, who really cares? So buy buy used trailers. But anyway, so bumper pull versus gooseneck. Gooseneck to me is the way to go if you're doing, um, if you can, let me put it that way. Uh, the reason I like gooseneck is because gooseneck pulls better. They tend to uh, give you better traction when you're driving because they put that weight in your bed. Uh, they're easier to back up just as a general rule. You can see a little bit better and everything. Um, and uh, they, they are a lot more stable when you're driving with them and, and big heavy loads. But if you don't have a truck like an F-250 or, or 20, uh, a three-quarter ton or above, I wouldn't do a gooseneck. Gooseneck pulling with a, with a 1500 is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, it doesn't really seem to, to work that well. The, the vehicle doesn't have enough girth behind it to really uh, control the load any better. So um, I've pulled them with both. But as a general rule, half-ton trucks just don't pull goosenecks that well um and you so you lose a lot of the advantages the, the advantages with the bumper pulls is easier to pull behind something like a small tractor and things like that so um uh, you know there are some advantages to bumper pulls and they're easier to hook up on you can put them on most vehicles you don't have to have gooseneck hookups you know uh, my neighbor uh, we borrow trailers from each other all the time but he doesn't have a gooseneck hookup in his truck bed so he can't use mine so um so, so anyways, there's some uh, there, there's some certain advantages and disadvantages with the gooseneck. I like goosenecks, and I err on the side of goosenecks. Um, and uh, I would not buy, have bought this flatbed as a as a as a bumper pull because we're doing too much heavy duty work with it. But for light agricultural use and residential use, bumper pulls are just fine. Uh, but certainly get the gooseneck if you can, and if you see the benefits there are, are fitting for you, uh, that it, it really can, can certainly help. And they just, they, they do, they pull heavy loads a lot better. You don't want to do heavy loads with a bumper pull. And you and, and people say, oh, you can't get a bumper pull on those. Yeah, you can. It's called a panel hitch. Yeah, you, you see them all the time. It's what goes behind dump trucks. And you can put a panel hitch behind a, an F-350 or F-250. We used to have one, and I hated it. Um, we used to pull it behind our, uh, our this Ram 3500. Panel hitches do not pull well. Um, they they really just don't. So um, they're they're harder to back up because they tend to not want to respond, and then they respond real suddenly. And uh, so they're they're kind of a pain to back up. Um, and we did them a lot in the military because that's all the military ones are panel hitches, and um, you hear them called donut hitches or whatever. But uh, but anyways, the, um, the 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 panel hitches, you know, they're a heavy duty hitch, and so they they work for heavy duty stuff. Uh, but they're just not a great option. So. I'm not a big fan of them, um, and, uh, and and we'll never own one again unless we were going to have buy a dump truck and we wanted something to go behind it. Uh, they're they're not a good option. They they also don't ride very well on trucks that are not uh, that that are uh, really residential trucks, right? Like a like a um, quarter or a, a one ton, uh, one and a half ton, something like that, and and below, like like the Dodge Ram 550s or the Ford uh, 450s, like things like that, and below. They don't ride well because they tend to sit 
low, and so you always got a bad angle on them, and you have to do welding to adjust it, or, or and they're they're just kind of a hassle. So I'm not a fan of pendle hitch trailers. I uh, never have been, and uh, will never do one again. You also lose a lot of the advantages of bumper pull because nobody has pendle hitches, so nobody can like your friends can't borrow your trailer, you can't borrow theirs. It's kind of a hassle. So, um, so that's that's a couple reasons why I don't like them. I would personally stick with um, with goosenecks if at all possible, and then bumper pulls if you just really don't see the advantage of the goosenecks for what you're doing. Uh, Dad, you know, he just bought a trailer, and I wish he got heavier duty axles, but he bought a smaller trailer, and uh, but in, in, you know, bumper pull for him suited really, really well for what he's doing. So the the next kind of ticket item is. Um, how much length do you want on the trailer? This is actually a really hard one to get. So when we were looking at this flatbed trailer, we were looking at ones that were up to about 34 feet. And uh, 34 feet was the largest one I looked at. And really the smallest one you can get from these from factory is about 25 feet. So we were somewhere in that range for the size trip for uh, a 10 ton trailer that we wanted. Um, 20 feet is, or 25 feet is, is about the maximum I really want to go on a trailer length. And, and the reason why is because when you start going longer than that, they just get to be a hassle driving them around and going in and out of these the, um, areas that you're going, like, you know, truck stops and stuff like that are fine. But if you have to go into a gas station at all, especially if you have a gas truck, and you don't have a diesel, um, it's a nightmare. And so, um, I, you know, a, a 25 foot trailer is about the, the largest I want to go. Uh, we knew we were going to be using this on back logging roads, which is why we said, okay, we're going to do, um, we're going to do a 25 foot trailer. I turned down the offer on, I had a real nice deal on a 34 foot trailer, but at the end of the day, it just wasn't what I needed. It was too long. And so we did a, a 25 footer. Um, the, uh, the, the 25 footer worked really, really well for us. Um, it's a good length. It hauls everything that we wanted to haul. Um, and so we've been real happy with it. The, um, the reality of it is that you have to look at what you're hauling, what you think you're going to be hauling, and then kind of balance it in there. The 34 footer would have been great when we want to go get hay, but you know, it would suck for everything else that we want to do. So it's easier for those couple times a year that we go get hay just to make an extra trip and get it. Um, and so you have to kind of look at that. There's certain times where it's just easier to make an extra trip rather than it is to have this massive trailer. Dad, when Dad bought his trailer, he had to get a custom trailer because nobody made the length he wanted with a dual axle. He wanted the advantages of a dual axle, but he wanted to make sure that he could go and uh, get his ATV into these logging countries that he's going into, and so he wanted a short trailer. Same thing that we were considering. So uh, definitely some, some thoughts to consider there. And then uh, when, you, when you check out your trailer, you want to make sure that you're checking out the, uh, the, the features of it, making sure that everything's right. Is the, do, the, do the brakes work? Do the lights work? Because it gets to be a hassle and you have to start replacing that stuff. And then sometimes you find you have to rerun new wiring and things like that. It just gets to be a nightmare, especially on, on older trailers where the wiring's all cracked and crinkled up and everything. Um, and so I like just to buy them with everything working. I hate working on trailers. It's one thing about I already own the trailer, but I don't like buying trailers that, that are a problem. Uh, they always seem easier than they are to do all that stuff to. And then if you're dealing with things that are dual dual wheel, tandem wheel, tandem axles, they um, those axles are heavy and those bolts are big and it takes really something pretty special to uh, to get that out of there. So. Um, you want to, you, you really got to have some heavy duty equipment to work on those. If you want to replace an axle, I replaced an axle on that pinnel hitch trailer. I put a, I put a 10,000 pound Dexter axle on it and it was a nightmare getting that thing underneath there because you don't have the lifts. You don't, I mean, if you have three quarter inch sockets, that's great. And we did. Uh, but even that I was, I was having to put cheater bars on them and jacks on it to get everything broken free. It was a nightmare. Um, and, and at the end of the day, actually there was two big bolts. No matter what I did, I couldn't get them off. I had to cut them off and just replace them. Um, so you, ha you have to, you, you have to look at, uh, you know, look at the condition of the trailer. The deck boards are not terribly hard to replace and if they cut the price down accordingly, but don't just cut the price down for what it costs you. Cut the price down because you're going to spend a day doing it. It's kind of a pain. And then you got to cut off all the screw heads and everything. It's, it's, it can be kind of a little bit of a hassle. So, um, on some trailers, the deck boards, you got to be real careful of because some of them are welded in with angle iron on the ends. And so, um, you can't replace them without cutting out the angle iron and rewelding more angle iron on there. Um, and so you have to have access to and know how to weld. So, um, make sure that you're aware of that whenever you're dealing with those. So it, it's, it, if you've got to do that, you, uh, go ahead and get a quote from a shop and see what they'll charge you to do it. But, uh, but I would certainly, uh, I would certainly consider you know, what the, what the cost of the trailer is and what kind of deal you're getting on it. Cause it's going to take you some time. 
So anyways, guys, that's about it. Uh, there are obviously other things to consider, you know, ramps, heavy dutiness of the trailer, you know, different brands of trailer. To me, trailers, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, there's certain brands that are better. To me, Diamond C is probably about the best out there, but at the end of the day, it's just a big hunk of steel, and there's two axles underneath it, and most of the stuff that actually makes them, their certain brands better, is replaceable on the trailers anyways. Um, you know, Diamond C uses 8,000 pounds, uh, what is it, Lipper, Lippet, something like that, axles, and then uh, everybody else pretty much uses 7,000 pound Dexter axles, so there's some advantages to that. You know, you get a heavier duty axle, but you also, you know, have a smaller company to find parts for. Everybody carries parts for, for Dexter axles, so if you know what the axle is, you can find the, find the components to do repairs on it. So there, there's obviously other nuances here, but what, really what I wanted to talk to you guys about was kind of a broad overview of how to pick this trailer, because we just got done doing this. We love the flatbed trailer that we got. Uh, very, very happy with it. Uh, it allows us to do everything that we want to do on our farm. And uh, we got it actually to open up this mulching division for our other company. So uh, we're only kind of partially using it for the farm. Mostly it's for this mulching division. So um, other than that, guys, I appreciate y'all watching this a little bit longer video. But uh, I like to set these up sometimes so that y'all can just listen to them. So if, uh, if you're while you're working or something like that. So anyways, guys, we'll talk to y'all later. <laughs>